Welcome to part one of short barreled shotguns and rifles for CQB. Today we have a small selection of short barrel rifles and shotguns. Some of these are NFA items, some of them are not. In the United States, the National Firearm Act regulates short barrel rifles and shotguns. In other countries of the world, they have different regulations than we do here. So, since I'm in the United States, I'll be referring to some of the NFA rules from time to time that apply here that may or may not be similar to the rules in your area. So, if you're going to delve into these type of weapons, you're going to need to see what is legal and illegal in your area prior to uh, working on items like these. Now, what we're going to do is talk about these items and how they're utilized. One thing you need to keep in mind, some of these items are difficult to use and can be extremely dangerous to the user. They're small concealable weapons and a lot of them are very powerful. They're unforgiving of mistakes, so you need to use extreme caution when employing these. So we're going to give you the normal disclaimer in this video that uh, you proceed at your own risk when you handle or operate any weapon such as these. One of the most confusing things about short barrel rifles and shotguns is the large variety of them. Some of these weapons are designed for tactical employment others are food gathering weapons. When the National Farm Act was passed in the United States they were all lumped together and pretty much the government didn't care. What they did is eliminated a lot of very good hunting weapons that were very common and useful items. Other short barrel rifles and shotguns are primarily combat weapons. The type of short barrel shotgun or rifle that you're using will dictate its tactical employment methods to hold and fire it and techniques that are applicable and not applicable to it. We'll start with short barrel rifles. You have several types of short barrel rifles. The first type of short barrel rifle is just a cut down conventional rifle. This one does not fall within NFA regulations because its overall length and barrel length are over the minimums. Some of these are encountered with the barrel cut off shorter, which would place it under NFA registration. Basically, when they passed the National Firearm Act, the original versions that were being considered banned all semi-automatic rifles, full automatic weapons, and all handguns. So the short barrel registration that we have today was a compromise where the handguns and semi-automatics were removed from the NFA through effort of the NRA. The origin of the short barrel regulations was to keep people from building handguns and concealable weapons with the government's intent to eliminate handguns. What the uh, Democrats under Roosevelt wanted to do was eliminate all concealable firearms. The other reasoning behind it was to prevent poor people from making handguns out of cheap rifles and shotguns, denying them their right to protect themselves. Then we have a combination gun. These combination guns have both rifle and shotgun barrels. These were this one is a 22410. These were primarily used for food procurement and were not seen at the time as combat weapons but were included in NFA legislation. This is a M4 short barrel rifle which is used by the US government. This gun was designed to be used in aircraft and carried with aircraft crew. What they would do was bail out or crash land with this weapon and it would be used for food procurement purposes. The M6 was a combination weapon similar to this that was 22 Hornet and 410. This one is 22 Long Rifle and 410 and you'll see a lot of these were in use also. And it's an interesting fact that the most efficient hunting weapons 
the government saw and used themselves, they didn't see fit to allow you to own. Now, one advantage of a short barrel rifle is injured people, crippled people, people with disabilities can use these because these guns can be operated one-handed. They're lightweight, easy to use. The last type of short barrel rifles under U.S. legislation are shoulder stock handguns. When these guns were invented around the turn of the century, the tactical niches for pistols, carbines, submachine guns, and machine pistols hadn't yet been firmly established. When these were originally marketed, they were marketed as pistol carbines because they were dual use. So you had a detachable stock here, and this stock functioned as a holster. The gun was slipping here. This is, was carried on a leather carrier. So you could employ this as a regular handgun, or you could employ it as a short barrel rifle. This particular model, the Mauser that I have here, is exempt from NFA registration because it's a Kira relic, and it's accompanied by an original stock. Now, this is a machine pistol. It's a later version of the Mauser we showed you there. This one is select fire, so it's semi and full automatic. It falls under machine gun regis registration in the United States. But tactically speaking, this is a short barrel rifle pistol carbine. With full automatic fire, it's almost a useless handheld. With the shoulder stock attached, it can be employed at 10, 15, 20 meters. It's more useful as a short barrel semi-automatic rifle though. But it does give you a full automatic capability. The methods for employing these are very different than you would, for instance, employ a semi-automatic AR-15 or a full automatic M16 with a 10-inch barrel. So in a later video, we'll look at employment of short barrel rifles, shoulder stock handguns, and combination weapons. Basically, we have three types of short barrel shotguns. The first type is a shot pistol. These are conventional handguns that use shotgun shells. In various countries, these can be found in 9mm. There's a 9mm variant of smoothbore pistols that uses shot or round ball. 410 is probably the most common. 28 gauge, 20 gauge, and 12 gauge models are also available. These were pretty common around the turn of the century, and you could buy these through the mail before the National Firearm Act. This is basically a hunting and utility pistol. They were very popular at the time. The small gauge versions of this are basically a food procurement weapon, not really a combat weapon. Once you move up into 20 and 12 gauge, it is useful as both a food procurement and a combat weapon. The second type of short barrel shotgun that we see that's employed quite a bit has the stock amputated in the barrel. This version was made by a classic manufacturer in Virginia. The, uh, there were versions of guns like this that were factory made that you could buy prior to 1934. Some factories up until today supply version, cut down versions like this to law enforcement class 3 dealers. During the Great Depression and before the implementation of the National Firearm Act, these were referred to as whippet guns. There's a lot of techniques for employing whippet guns, and uh, these are probably the most dangerous of the NFA weapons to employ because it's easy to point them at yourself, and their recoil is heavy, and uh, it's easy to shoot yourself with them. The last version is a conventional shotgun with a short barrel and a shoulder stock. These are employed pretty much the same way regular shotguns are. They're just handier to use and tactically it's easier to move and conceal them. In our next video we will explore pistol grip shotguns and shot pistols and uh, training methods 
to use with them and some pointers and tips. Thanks for joining us today. Please rate, subscribe, let us know what you think. If you've seen individual weapons you want reviewed, let us know that in the comments also. Thanks. Thank you.